everybody. Uh, sorry we're late. Um, we had some technical issues. We're trying some new stuff. I think as you can see, um, we actually have uh, some better fidelity and some better audio and it's kind of how I've been doing my streams um, for my singing. So uh, hopefully um, that the wait will be worth it and we'll work out the bugs as we go. But I really appreciate your patience. Uh, I want to do a shout out to my notification squad, all my homies out there. I uh, really appreciate everybody. Uh, you know, we've got uh, Olivia Wenya. We've got, uh, I can't pronounce that guy's name. Uh, we've got Mo Shin is back on board. Good to see you, Mo Shin. Jamie, uh, good to see you, Jamie. You guys tell me where you're from. We've got Philippe from Paris. Hello, Philippe. Hey, what's going on in Paris right now? That place, uh, Macron is a pretty interesting character, isn't he? Uh, anyway, Slovenska, Honduras, Poland. Uh, anyway, hi there. Nice, no, nice notebook. Uh, I'm not sure what notebook is. Maybe whatever. Hi, Roz. Uh, a good friend of mine. His name's Roz. She actually uh, is the head of what's called Stand With Us. I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, Olivia from Denmark. We got Thomas. Uh, Shibby. Shibby, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, I want to I wanna kind of get, get cruising along here because we got started late. So I want to make sure that um, we get enough information in. And as promised today, I'm going to go ahead and do, um, in fact, let me move this. Oh, I see nice notebook. I see what you mean by that. Ah, that's because we were going to default back to um, uh, my Mac as my main source and we were able to get this up and running. So um, with that said, I have what I'm calling how to care for your boys, no brainer tips. And so um, now tips are kind of like just, you know, you take a coin, you know, kind of like wishing well, you know, here's a tip, here's another tip, right? So I try to be a little bit more comprehensive than just tips. Some of this information I've already covered, but I'm consolidating this and making it coherent in one one place, one holding place, so that um, you can refer to it. And then we'll talk more about it as we go. But uh, with that said, um, we also have a lot of excellent video tutorials, and we'll talk about that more as we go. So instead of me going onto rabbit trails of big explanations of all these things, I'll refer to specific videos that I will put in the description so that you guys can go back and cl uh, click on. So if you have a specific issue, uh, you can go, okay, Ken said to refer to this video in the description. So I want to be clear on that so you don't think I'm, um, I'm not giving you in-depth information and yet I'm not overwhelming everybody with too much information. So now, I like to start off by saying a couple things. The first thing is, is that not all information is created equal. And I know I've said that before, but let me explain really clearly what I mean by this. There is so much noise out on the internet, and I mean, it's nuts. I'm confused, and, and I know what I'm talking about, right? Um, so how do you know what information is actually legitimate and what isn't? Well, the only way I personally can tell is, is that I know how long I've been singing. I know how long I've put things to the test. I know what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. And I'm not trying to bash other people giving information on the internet, but I do have to say that unless that person dispensing that information on the internet has actually lived it, how in the world do they really know if it works? And this is so important, guys. I can't drive this home hard enough. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So I just want to speak for myself. Now, I know I've mentioned this before, and this is in no way to be braggadocious. I just want to be clear about how, uh, what kind of a road dog I've been uh, and, and where I got my information and how hard it was to come by, how long it took to get it. So... Um, I have 40 records out. I want you guys just to think about this. Now, I look at other vocal coaches on the internet or whatever, whoever's giving information. I don't even see them singing, not even singing themselves, much less ever have a record out or who has ever toured. Now, really get your brain around this because this is really important. So here's a vocal coach or someone giving information in whatever discipline, it may be, it may be playing guitar, it may be whatever, but I'm, we're talking about singing right now. So, so this coach doesn't sing, displays no singing, and if they do, it's maybe a scale or something in a climate controlled booth or whatever, but you, you, you don't hear them singing a song, a complete song, and they show little or no students actually singing. And I'm not talking about some auto-tuned, hey, I'm so-and-so from the internet, and my name's Katie, and, and you know I can teach you how to sing in 30 days, right? This kind of weird sort of 
information where it's a, an ad that comes out that's auto-tuned immediately comes out and then some girls you know talking about how how awesome our youtube channel and they never even say they did the program they just said i'm so and so and you really got to learn how good technique and this other guy goes on and makes it look like they're his students i mean this just gets like smoke and mirrors so ken yes i'm on a rant but i really have to get you guys to wrap your brain around so i have 40 records out not one record, not one tour, not singing at some little recital or, or some theater thing back in college. 40 records. I'm going to drive this like a pile driver home. 25 years of touring, pretty more like 30, but 25 years of some pretty hard touring. What does that look like? Well, here's what that picture looks like. You make a record. You're in a studio. You sing, let's just talk about the singing portion of it. The singing portion of a 12 song CD, if it's done right, uh, usually is, you know, 12, 13, 14 days straight of singing, four, five, six, seven, eight hours, plus all your background vocals, which is another four or five days. So you're into this thing for about 20 days straight of nonstop singing, somewhere between six and eight hours a day, five to six days a week. Your voice better be able to hold up to that, okay? That's one thing. But then there's taking it out on the road and reduplicating what it is. Now, Ken, wait a minute. I thought you were going to tell us how to take care of your voice. You know, uh, no-brainer tips. I'm going to get to that. But I want to point out where this information came from because how would you know how to take care of your voice and left, unless you've been caught in a situation where you've had to take care of your voice? And all these vocal coaches, they come out and they'll talk, but they don't sing. So how do you know if they've ever been able to take care of their voice or if they even know what they're talking about, right? Unless they can prove it. So anyway, touring night after night. Now think about this. You get on a tour. You could be flying somewhere. So there could be time zone issues. There could be eating poorly issues. There's sleep issues. I mean, this list goes on and on. Climate issues, hot, cold, you name it. Everything is thrown at you. So you have to learn how to take care of your voice because if you have a show or two go down, it could literally bankrupt your tour. I'm not kidding. So in other words, if you get sick on the road and you have a string of shows go down there and you're, and there's a lot of people's paychecks depending on you and your tour. Now it's one thing as a guitar player to get sick and you know, you still can play sick. It's another, quite another thing to sing through a cold and flu. And I recommend we do that to keep our voices strong if we know how to do it correctly. But so 25 years of touring night after night after night. You, you do your shows, you might do a morning drive on a radio show, you do an album signing thing or an acoustic thing for a live radio thing or something to get people to come to the show. I mean, you are just singing around the clock. Now you get on, you do the show, you'd sign some autographs, you go back to your hotel room, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so wound up, how am I gonna get to sleep? Takes you a couple, three hours to get to sleep, you get up in the morning, you get back on a bus and you go 400 miles to the next gig and you do this over and over for weeks and even months on end. Folks, this is how you obtain legit quality information of how to sing night after night and take care of your voice, okay? Now, I had to prelude all of this because I have to separate this information out. Not all information is created equal and we need to know where our information comes from. So no matter where you get your information, I don't care, it could, may not be me, I may not be your style, no problem. But find out if that vocal coach sings, sings well, sings songs you can relate to in styles that you like, and displays other students singing, not just claiming to be the number one vocal coach on YouTube. That's ridiculous. By the way, he's not. He's, he has much less subscribers than a lot of other vocal coaches on YouTube. So I think that's kind of interesting. That, that lie alone should tell you something about where they're coming from. Think about that. And someone else that tells you that you can be awesome in 30 days, that's a lie. So think about what they're telling you and why they're trying to trap you into this funnel. It's a click funnel. It's a sales funnel to get you coming back and buying their crap. Okay. Just ask them to sing, ask them to sing songs, let them post it. And also one more thing too, by the way, uh, and I am on a rant, bear with me. I'll move on. I promise. But if they were so awesome, why aren't they growing their channels organically? Think about that. They would grow it organically by singing, having other students singing, vocal tips, etc. They would grow it organically. They wouldn't buy ads. 
They wouldn't pay for views they would be able to organically grow their channels. So really, these are real uh, litmus tests for just keeping a, a keen eye out on, on where this information is coming from and how legit it is. So, um, so with that said, I, I just wanna say that for me, I've done a lot of singing. Um, and I have had to learn early on how to take care of my voice or I could forfeit a tour and have it go bankrupt. So the first thing I wanna focus on is um, what kinds of things are we talking about to take care of our voices? So in other words, that's a big expansive subject. Let's talk about it. I think the first thing that we should focus on is what kind of voice issues that we need or vocal issues we need to, um, to address. Some people have issues with hoarseness. They walk around kind of hoarse all the time, you know, and they want to go, oh, you know, Anthony Robbins, we've talked about this. Um, some people have issues with loss of range. Ken, I've gotten older, or I screamed, I screamed at a football game, screamed, <laughs> uh, I, I went screaming. Anyway, and I, I lost my vocal range. You know, how do I get it back, right? Uh, some people have trouble um, even speaking at all. You know, they, they speak for a little while and their voice gets fatigued and they don't understand why. Some people uh, very, be, feel very inconsistent with their voice. Well, one day I can do it. The next day I can't, you know, how do I deal with this? What do I do? Um, others may have issues such as post-nasal drip. We talked about this in a couple previous streams and I'm gonna post a bunch of really cool videos on health, um, you know, how to take care of your voice, mucus on the cords, diet for singing. In fact, I'm gonna do a whole live stream on, on updates of some new information that's come out regarding good diet and good dietary practices. Um, and then warm-ups for beginners, you know, all kinds of different things that are really, really help you or warm-ups before shows. Is it the same as your normal workout? No, it's not. Um, you know, how, what do we do about that? So post-nasal drip, on, on the, from the sinuses as it drips on the vocal folds causes inflammation. We've talked about that, we'll, we'll address this more here later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the types of things first and then I'm gonna come back and revisit each one. So, so I'm not just brushing over these quickly, I wanna address what they are and then we'll come back and knock one, each one out one at a time. So anyway, uh, vocal, the, this post nasal drip can cause hoarseness, uh, dryness in the cords. You know, I just, ah, oh, I just always feel so dry. Cracky voice, your voice cracks, right? Why, how do we overcome that? I have a video on voice cracking, I'll put that in the description. Froggy voice, I have a video on that, I'll put that in the description. Uh, loss of stamina, you know, I could sing a song or maybe two songs and after the third song I'm shot, what do I do? Uh, it, losing one's voice quickly, you know, in a, in a half of a song, boom, I'm fatigued and I, I just can't finish the tune. Uh, Tickle in the trachea. A lot of people are going through this, which also could have to do with post-nasal drip um, and also um, uh, acid reflux can play a tremendous role in, in the esophagus and in the trachea. So uh, this constant acid coming up and washing over the vocal folds. Now the vocal folds themselves were not designed to take a hit of digestive enzymes, the acids in the stomach regurgitating up in the throat and the acid eating away at the vocal folds. So, and the answer to that is not just taking a bunch of antacid and closing off the valve to keep the acid flow in the stomach. That is a no, 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 because what that does is it neutralizes acid in the stomach, um, which then uh, inhibits your ability to digest food and can cause leaky gut, and some really horrible things, uh, ruin the gut flora in the stomach, you know, the probiotic gut flora in the stomach. So, so since there are many different types of vocal issues, there are also many different types of ways that we can care for our instrument, our voice. So uh, this is not medical advice, guys, so I wanna be clear about this. I'm not a medical doctor. If you have a serious medical issue, please see your licensed healthcare practitioner. This is information I've accrued over the years that's worked for me, and I'm sharing this information with you. If you have a serious medical issue, please see a doctor. This is, I am not a medical doctor, and I'm not claiming that. I'm just claiming personal experience. But I do have information that's helped me preserve my voice over the years, and I think as you guys have seen in my age and whatnot, uh, I show no signs of slowing because I know how to care for my voice. I know how to take care of it. And as I think you've also seen people from my generation, especially the 80s metal guys and whatnot, almost all of them have lost their voices because they didn't know how to care for their voice, okay? Very, very important. And again, that separates from other people just on the internet, parroting information or regurgitating information that they cut and pasted or some course they bought and they're trying to you know, create a name for themselves so they can sell their product. Now, with that said, I wanna get started. Um, I'd like to start out by saying that the voice is organic. 
okay? And it's very temperamental and fragile, uh, and it needs that kind of care. So it's not kind of like, you know, uh, guitar, for example, you know, you get a blister on your finger or whatever, and you're like, oh, cool, I can play longer because I have blisters on my fingers. Get a blister on your vocal folds, which is a node or a polyp, and then you lose phonation. Something called dysphonia happens, which is the lack of the inability to create sound, and then we're, we're out of the game, okay? So where a guitar player can get, you know, a blister on his finger, we don't want a blister on our vocal fold. Now, I know the title of today's live stream is No Brain Your Tips. I said that. Uh, so I want to start with the tips, each one, like I said, and revisit them one at a time. So the first no brainer tip I mentioned was diet. Um, well, I actually didn't mention that as first, but it's one of them, is diet. And I know I've covered this subject, but I want to glaze over it and braze over it here and now so we can put these in order so we have one uh, compiled place we can put all this in and then we can branch out and then visit these subjects as we need them, okay? So diet. Um, now, I know that a lot of people are not willing to change. And if you're not willing to change, you're not willing to make an effort, then don't expect the result, okay? So I'm giving you information that absolutely will help you. I guarantee it, by the way. I guarantee it will help you if you follow it. If you're disciplined and you really want to know how to fix it, I'm gonna show you. If you don't, you may not even wanna finish the, you know, tune off, because you're probably not gonna wanna hear the rest of what I have to say. If you do wanna fix it, and you do wanna get healthier and better, this will help you, okay? And I don't wanna belabor it, but I just gotta cover that, because um, if the body doesn't have the nutrients that it needs, how can it possibly rejuvenate itself? You know, how can it regenerate if it, in the cells, how can they regenerate if you're not giving the body the nutrients? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that here. Um, and that's a, a no-brainer tip. So I'm gonna start, that's the first no-brainer tip, and I'm gonna come back and revisit these. So first no-brainer tip is diet. Sex, second no-brainer tip is sleep. You know, if we don't get enough sleep, again, the body rejuvenates in the sleep cycle. So if we don't have, you know, a, a, a decent amount of sleep, you know, and if we have sleeping issues, there's ways to overcome that too. And in fact, I want to do a whole uh, video on that because I actually had some very, very severe sleeping issues uh, in, in my, you know, 20s, 30s, and 40s, all the way through there that were just horrific. And I'm going to do a whole stream on um, how to sleep better for singing or getting better sleep for singing. I'm not covering that here and I don't even have a video on that. So stay tuned for that for you guys, uh, insomniacs out there. But so just like diet, the body is not given enough time to regenerate, it can't heal. Okay, the next no-brainer tip is exercise. Again, I'm gonna come full circle and revisit these, so hang in there, um, is exercise. If we don't have strength in our body, how can we expect our body to perform things that require strength, right? We talked about singing being like a sport, and I'm gonna cover that in a minute, um, but it's a very strenuous thing to do. It needs strength. And if we don't have strength in our body, how can we expect to perform a, a, a task or something like this if, we, if we, our body doesn't have the, the oomph to pull it off? And particularly diaphragmatic strength, I'm gonna put videos in the description on diaphragmatic support. I'm not gonna cover that here. I'm not even gonna talk about it because that's the first no-brainer tip to um, good strength in sound is understanding how to get diaphragmatic support. I've covered it many times. We'll put it in the description. It will definitely be one of the go-tos if you really wanna understand. The next no-brainer tip is substance abuse. Now, I don't mean just crack or cocaine or, or whatever. I'm gonna talk, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, even smoking pot, smoking pot and, and the way it, um, it turns your, your cords to leather, like smoking anything, cigarettes, whatever. Um, excess of things like caffeine, uh, energy drinks, taurine, and things that are in energy drinks that um, cause inflammation. They dry you out like crazy. They're, uh, they they um, actually uh, have, have, you know, eliminate a lot of the moisture in the body. Uh, for, not surfactant, what's the word I'm looking for? I'll think of it in a second. Um, anyway, and a diuretic, they're, they act like a diuretic. So um, you find yourself getting more and more dehydrated and needing more and more fluids, healthy fluids, particularly just good room temperature filtered water to put back and replenish hydration in the body. Otherwise, your cords are getting super dried out. They don't have the moisture for good closure and the rest of your body's doing the same thing. I wanna add up one, one other thing about caffeine and taurine is the way caffeine works is it actually shrinks your veins so that oxygen has to race throughout the blood and to the brain and it shrinks capillaries. So you're actually causing trauma 
to the blood flow in your body to get it to spaz out that causes you to kind of hype out and become more awake, more alert, more aware, whatever. But it takes its toll in the area of shrinking the blood vessels, shrinking the capillaries, shrinking the veins, um, and then dehydration ensues, okay? It also robs you of vitamin C. So um, we won't go into all that because if you have a good diet, you can do this. I'm not saying you can't drink you know, coffee uh, or, or, or drink an uh, uh, energy drink once in a while, but if your main staple is that, that is not good and you should seriously reconsider that. The next no-brainer tip is doing extreme things with the voice, such as scream or growl or distortion or overdrive or all the different terms, you know, people say extreme fry, whatever you want to call it, um, whatever the new flavor of the month term is. And like I said, singing is a sport. Well, if singing is a sport and growl and scream is an extreme sport. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I know I sound like I'm rep repeating myself a lot, but Think about this, guys. Think about an extreme sport. Think about hang gliding or paragliding. Are you gonna just jump off a cliff because you wanna go straight into you know paragliding off some giant cliff somewhere? No, you're gonna work your way up to it. You're gonna get good information. You're gonna get tips on how not to hurt yourself. Not tips, you're gonna get information on how not to hurt yourself. And you're gonna practice at different levels and you're gonna take it up a notch and ratchet it up a notch and keep going. And then finally, when you think you're ready, you'll go off a decent sized hill. And then when you're even ready, you go off a bigger hill. And then, and then finally, the crazy, you know, Red Bull extreme sport guys that jump off these mountains and, you know, go over that, you know, you may end up there. But this kind of singing, is the Red Bull guy jumping off a cliff. I wanna be very clear about that because I see so many people ruining their voices, thinking, I just wanna learn distortion, Ken. I don't wanna get your course and learn how to sing. I wanna go straight to growl or scream. Good luck with that. Better men and women have tried and failed. And I'm not saying that there aren't people out there doing it. You know, you've got a few, a few winner, lottery winners that have been able to figure out some things, some, some, you know, a fal false vocal fold fry things that, that are able to get them by. But over time, it will absolutely cost you. Look at M Shadows and other people that have done it. And it destroys and inhibits your ability to sing clearly, you know, with a clear voice. So, we discuss in, in my singing course how to start and build these things in succession, in order, and how to uh, eventually build up to that kind of singing should that be your flavor of, of the month choice of how you want to uh, how you want to represent your art. Let's just say it that way. So we're gonna um, we're gonna also discuss elixirs. We've talked about that before. Um, I have. Um, uh, talked about that elixirs have glycerin and other forms of sugar or things, a slippery elm that cut the throat, that coat the throat, yes, like throat coat, um, but that's not actually bad. It's just not helpful and in some cases can be harmful if you continuously clear your throat to get rid of the, the coat that you put on it. Uh, you find yourself going, ah, you know, and getting rid of it, which exacerbates the cords themselves. So um, now I'm gonna revisit diet and I'm gonna cover that in the diet section. And of course, last and certainly not least is vocal training. That's the last no-brainer tip. So these are all the, the start of the tips and I'm gonna revisit each one. So um, guys, again, you know, this is like any discipline, playing a guitar, learning how to, to, to surf, uh, learning how to play soccer, uh, you know, whatever discipline this is, in this case, it's learning how to sing, learning how to play guitar or sing, this is your instrument, get some good quality qualified vocal training. And remember, if you're gonna go to a vocal trainer, right, would you go to a piano teacher that couldn't do it themselves, right? Think about that. Would you go to a guitar teacher that couldn't physically show you? Stop going to coaches that can't sing and sing well. Think about it. It's the only discipline we forgive people because the subject is so mysterious and they come up with this tribal knowledge. They claim to have this knowledge that's so mysterious and only they have it and you want what they have. Make them demonstrate it. Say, hey, I'm interested in your course. Can you sing for me? Just post on your channel, you're singing and some students singing, so not only you know how to do it, but proof that you can teach others, others to do it, so I can, I can determine myself to see if you're my guy, right? I may not be your guy, I'm just giving you, that's a great tip, I promise. Now, these will be our no-brainer tips, and we all know what we're supposed to do, that's why this is called no-brainer, it's like, duh. These are no-brainer tips. We all know what we're supposed to do, and yet, do we do them? Like everything I said, I don't think it's some, some revelation to you guys, 
but are you willing to go the distance with me and actually do this stuff, okay? Um, and oftentimes we just sweep these things under the carpet, under the rug, pretend that they're not important, uh, and then we wonder why we have issues or why we can't get better. Now, these are no-brainer tips. I don't think there's anything I just mentioned that somewhere in your life you haven't heard, oh, wow, yeah, I know I'm supposed to do that. I'm supposed to eat right. I'm supposed to do that. I'm supposed to get some exercise, get some good vocal training. I know I'm supposed to do all this stuff, right? Most people want hacks. They want the quick fix. They don't want anything that's gonna take them legit information to get them to a legitimate place. They wanna learn how to sing in 30 days. You know, it's funny. I had someone recently, just uh, yesterday, I think it was, yeah, yesterday, who emailed me and said, if I get your gold bundle, or if I do your master's course, can I go from beginner to professional singer in a week? And I'm like, what kind of question is that? And then he said, or if I really work at it, because I'm at COVID-19, I'm at home, I have all the time in the world to study, can I do it in two weeks? Or can I get through your master's class in three weeks? By the way, it's a six month course, right? It's like, guys, come on, don't, don't listen to crap out there. You're gonna get a hack to this and a hack to that. You know, this is building muscle structure. This is taking care of ourselves. Let's be honest with ourselves and stop listening to the lies out there on the internet. Again, my course may not be right for you. That's okay. But at least get information from someone that's just not trying to tell you that you're gonna, they're gonna put an octave on your range in 30 days or your money back. I mean, what the heck, guys? So this guy just, I literally said, no, that's humanly impossible. And I, and I don't even want those kinds of people in my forums or whatever, because their work ethic and their discipline will never get them there, and they'll never learn how to sing, and they'll always be searching for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and buying that lottery ticket, thinking that's gonna be their success and, and, and their retirement plan for singing. Anyway, um, and they'll work together in all these different tips I'm showing you will work together in concert um, as a collective for good vocal health and vocal care. So let's revisit the tips. The first one was diet, okay? Diet. And I'm gonna talk about diet, vitamins, elixirs, and inflammation. So I'm gonna put this all in one thing. Now, as I've previously discussed, dairy products can wreak havoc on our voices. But Ken, I love pizza, or you know, I love sour cream, or I love whatever, whatever dairy product, right? I'm not saying never eat it. I'm just saying if that's your main staple for food, or if you eat it a lot, or it's a go-to, yeah, it's gonna mess with your vocal folds. It creates mucus and mucus on the cords. It creates sinus infections. It inhibits, uh, or promotes, excuse me, um, promotes uh, inflammation. We talked about inflammation in the last thing, and we'll go through this again here briefly. Um, and I cover this again, and I'll put that in the description on diet, how that uh, it directly affects the vocal folds. If they're inflamed and they can't get, get, get good cord closure, then guess what? You're not, gonna, you're not gonna get phonation. You're not gonna get sound. So, as well as it disrupts, disrupts, say that three times, so it's disrupts, um, our digestive tract. Okay, and it, it really, it, it wreaks havoc on the good flora and the good uh, bacteria in the stomach fighting off infections, which eventually also leads, could lead to leaky gut. What is leaky gut? Leaky gut are these holes that get kind of placed throughout um, the lining in the walls of our stomach where we can't absorb nutrients and it goes into the bloodstream and it gets eliminated. Well, that's not good, folks. And, and a antibiotics are the, one of the, if not the number one contributor uh, to destroying good gut flora um, and causing leaky gut. So uh, antibiotics are horrific and you know worse than actually um, uh, any dairy products, but that's a subject for another day. I'm not saying don't take an antibiotic if you need it, but I'm saying use it as a last resort. You know, it's funny, I remember when I was touring in Germany and I had a really bad uh, cold, flu cold, and we went to the pharmacia, the pharmacy, uh, and uh, uh, they prescribed for me a probiotic, a doctor at a pharmacy, like a pharmacist, and they're kind of one and the same when you go in there, um, and they, they, pre they prescribed a over-the-counter probiotic. They didn't go straight to antibiotics like they do here in the United States or most of the West. Most of the doctors here, antibiotic, urethia myerson, eh, there's your Z-pack, eh, there's your this. So we over-prescribe these antibiotics to the point where they're no good anymore. They, they stop working and these super bugs build up and they get stronger and stronger and stronger. And the more we do this, the more we're, we're really 
you know, wreaking havoc on our guts. Again, remember, these are no-brainer tips. I know we've all heard this stuff somewhere before, and I know that we know it to be true, but are we willing to put this into action? So, um, I, I, and again, if we don't make changes, the older we get, this stuff gets progressively worse. So, this doesn't mean we starve ourselves and we can't enjoy our food, that's fine, but I wanna talk about diet, uh, and what's good. So this isn't true just for dairy, by the way. I want to cover some other subjects. High fatty red meats, right? Hot dogs especially, but you know, fatty red meats. Man, it's just not good for you, especially if it's over a flame broiled barbecue. And I love baby back pork ribs and I love a good steak and I even like a good hot dog once in a while. Over open flames, it's carcinogenic. We know, we know this now, which means cancer causing. So guys, you know, know that you're, you're, you're being naughty and you're going, okay, today I'm gonna be naughty and I'm gonna have X. And be okay with that, that's okay. You can do it once in a while. Just don't do it all the time if you want to progress and get better, okay? Don't make it a main staple. So, fatty foods, particularly processed foods. You know, I'm not, anything containing, containing hydrogenated oils, etc. You know this stuff already, guys. I'm just reminding you of this and how this all works together. So, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Potato chips, cookies, boxed mac and cheese, uh, you know, processed foods. We know what they are, right? Consider moving towards whole food, plant-based whole food diets as much as possible. Whole food, plant-based. Now, I've talked about this before. I'll put it in the description thing on my diet. There's great books out there, Forks Over Knives. There's Dr. Furman's Eat to Live. Um, he, Dr. Furman has several other really good books out. Um, I just recommend it. Now, does that mean, oh, Ken, I've got to now, I'm, you're asking me to just completely change my diet. I don't see myself doing that. I travel a lot, or I'm in school and I can't take the time to eat right, or you know, I just it's too expensive and organic is really too expensive. Just do the best you can. Do as much as you can, eating whole, whole you know, uh, excuse me, whole food, plant based diet, uh, dietary things. Just do the best you can and avoid some of these other things, which are, you know, um, by the way, you're going to see a, a heavy reduction in inflammation sinus infections, your immune function will grow incredibly strong. You're, you're gonna notice like all these things, your body starts to heal and get better with some, with some you know, responsible exercise, some simple things, all of a sudden you get stronger and then you can sing better. Ta-da, no brainer, right? All right, so uh, the reduction of inflammation, like I said, you'll get better energy, less sluggishness, higher immune function, which I said, which lessens colds and flu, better blood flow, it will lessen cholesterol and even diabetes, straight up. Um, you, I know a lot of people that have gotten off their diabetes medicine and completely off of it just by doing whole food plant-based diet. Straight up, it works, it's amazing. Doctors, you know, they're gonna keep giving you the pill because they're doctors and they sell you stuff. Uh, if I should say doctors, doctors are in your corner. The pharmaceutical industry mandates and, the, and, the, and our government mandates that the doctors are only allowed to prescribe certain things, so they, by law, have to prescribe certain things. Again, I'm not a doctor. If you have a medical issue, go see your, your licensed healthcare practitioner. But I'm telling you things that absolutely work for me, and if they work for me, I'm sharing it with you in hopes it can help you. So, um, and, and a reduction in, in uh, all kinds of things like, um, uh, you know, uh, vitamin E we know helps with glaucoma. I mean, I could go all down the list of all these different dietary su su supplements. Say that three times fast. I'm the kind of one of those kind of moods today. Um, this should also include, by the way, gang, the elimination of sugars, okay? Now, here's what I mean by that. I don't mean straight up sugar, though I do mean that. Um, but things like that convert to sugar, a lot of breads and pasta and, you know, like I said, potato chips and cookies and all these different things, you know, these convert to sugars and they're not good sugars, they're processed sugars and or uh, sugars that are not good for the body. Now, sugars that are good are okay to eat or fruit, to, or, you know, fruit and things like that that are healthy sugars, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, in fact, for some people, they swear off potatoes, like, you know, regular well, Idaho and potatoes and stuff because they convert to sugar. I don't think potatoes are bad. I think they're actually really good. Some people have issue with that. Sweet potatoes are actually really, really good and are really healthy and they're, you know, delicious. So anyway, we live in a world uh, that thinks that chicken and pasta is healthy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Ah, oh, man, I feel better. I have my chicken and pasta, a couple little pieces of broccoli on the side. I'm good to go. Uh, eh, wrong answer. Okay, so if I do have to re-educate some of us to this, 
That is not correct. Again, whole food, plant-based diet as much as possible. But Ken, I can't starve myself from my favorite foods. Then continue to live in this vicious cycle of what you put yourself in and don't expect to get better. It's that simple. As I've recommended before, again, of Joel Furman's book, I myself try to eat as much as I can the way Joel Furman is. And there's all kinds of things we can do to subsidize sweet things. Like, believe it or not, uh, medjool dates are awesome. I'll put it in a green shake. I'll put a three or four dates in there. You can't tell the difference. You think I just put a bunch of sugar in there. I'm not kidding. It's that delicious and healthy for you. So the dates and raisins in my cereal instead of, you know, sweetened, you know, putting sweetener or honey. Now, if I do honey, I'll do honey and I, I spring for some expensive honey like Manuka honey, but you don't have to do that. I mean, you can still supplement that, but again, you're going to put weight on, you know, so if you're trying to lose weight or trying to get, you know, bring your sugar levels down, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but it's also a good idea to get some good quality supplements. Now, you don't need to fill your shelves with gobs of supplements, okay? There are all kinds of supplements that address specific things. If you got a prostate issue, you know, uh, or a brain function issue, ginkgo biloba, biloba, you know, all kinds of things that you can do. Um, that was for brain, not for prostate. <laughs> but anyway, just a good multivitamin, guys. Just get a healthy, good, and I don't mean like a Costco brand that you know that you, you find yourself eliminating that doesn't even absorb in the body. But you know, nature's way. Just just go online and and look up you know uh, the different um, ratings that people rate their vitamins and go, hey, this is a good vitamin. Yeah, let's try this one. Give it a shot. Um, a good probiotic, guys. I can't say that enough. It's and now we've learned there's something called a prebiotic, a probiotic, and a postbiotic. Postbiotic. Boy, am I tongue today. Blah, 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 blah. But um, anyway, and so with that, that helps put back the good gut flora. If you've had to take a lot of antibiotics for sinus infections or other infections that you, whatever, uh, that's maybe hurt some of your, uh, your the linings of the wall of your stomach, um, probiotics will put that back in a really great way. Um, and good bacteria. Calcium, magnesium. We are so bereft of that and so deplete in that area. There's a, a product out. It's excellent. It's just called Calm, C-A-L-M, calm. And I take it every night and it puts back the, the much needed magnesium and the calcium. Now I want to add one more because of COVID-19 right now uh, that I didn't put in my list is vitamin D, particularly D3. A lot of people aren't going outside enough and so they're becoming deficient and are not getting a sufficient amount of vitamin D. So you can get, it's just one drop, you put it on your, your, your hand, you kind of lick it off or put it in a drink or something. Vitamin D, vitamin D3 just drops. Just get that, put it in there, they're really good, good. By the way, if you're starting to get a cold or flu, I've said this before, zinc lozenges. Now we've heard, isn't it interesting, you guys, don't you think I find this interesting? I've been talking about zinc for decades. I'm not kidding decades and just now everyone's coming out going hey you know if you're getting COVID-19 or you want to overcome it high doses of vitamin C particularly liposomal or lipospheric by the way what is liposomal vitamin C we're going to talk about taking vitamin C in a, in a minute lipospheric um, you've referred to that a lot of times Ken what is that well you could take a good vitamin C and it's also good just to get it from a healthy source whether it's orange juice or some plant you know that, that derives a good vitamin C but lipospheric um, or, or liposomal, what it does is, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those ring cleaners that use water, and it'll take a ring and you put the ring in this in this thing and it shakes up the water really bad. It sounds like a Frankenstein, Frankenstein experiment. Well, what it does is it actually breaks down the molecular structure of the liquid itself. And so the vitamin C attaches itself to something like soy or a, a protein, okay, a fat or a protein. So what they do is they take this thing and it breaks down the molecular structure of, let's say, soy, okay, or whatever that is, whatever fat, fatty or protein that it's attaching itself to, and it, and it, it miniaturizes it somewhere between, some are down to 100 times smaller than a regular molecule, some all the way up to 1,000. So in liposomal or lipospheric vitamin C, what it does is, the vitamin C attaches itself to this really small molecular structure that absorbs into the tissue and into the digestive tract, etc., a 100 to 1,000 times greater. So the absorption rate is up to 1,000 times greater. So if you take a vitamin C, a tablet or two or three or chewables or whatever, chances are you're just pissing it out. You're eliminating it or, or you know, number two, right? 
In this case, what's so good about liposomal or lipospheric is that it absorbs into the body and stays there. It's kind of like, it's creepy. It's kind of like what they do um, when they put horrible things like aluminum in your body for a vaccine or whatever, so it stays in the body. This is a healthy kind of, different sort of way of describing that, but that's actually what they do with these horrible vaccines is they put formaldehyde and they put aluminum that doesn't eliminate the body. So heavy metals are really hard to get out of the body. Uh, cilantro and things like that. You can do cilantro washes in the body to help get eliminate that. I cover all this stuff up. At some point, I'm, you know, I've done years and years and years of study on this uh, and it's not come by easy information. By the way, again, here I am a vocal coach. Now I'm talking to you about health, right? Uh, because I've had to do this to take care of myself on the road so that I stay healthy. All right, here we go. We're gonna talk about elixirs. Um, and by the way, so uh, let me back up. I forgot. Ah. Back up. We're still in supplements. Good omega oils for the brain and for cell regeneration function. You know, uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, Dirk Snyder, I forget his name. Uh, it's a, a, a 369 is a good one. Uh, good, a good cod liver oil. Ooh, I can't do cod liver oil. Well, you can in a capsule and you don't notice it. But a good cod liver oil or just a good plant-based omega oil. Just omega 369, you know, those are really good. This is excellent for brain function and cell regeneration. Um, turmeric or what's now referred to a lot as a, um, a, a combination of different things for absorption is curcumin. Turmeric or curcumin, those are awesome for inflammation. It is an incredible re a reducer of inflammation. Be careful not to get it on anything because it stains like crazy and you'll never get it out. But curcumin, I talked about vitamin C, a good vitamin C. I'm gonna also talk about just getting a good humidifier in your room to keep good uh, moisture and drink a lot of water. Believe it or not, it sounds silly, but drinking a lot of water helps uh, the veins. Remember we talked about caffeine, how the caffeine shrinks the veins? Water does exactly the opposite. Water it acts the veins to swell up in a good way or get larger expand and it gives you good blood circulation and good blood flow. Well, the better the blood flow, the better vitamin vitamin B, for example, can get to your muscle structure and vitamin B actually, is, uh, the oxygen with vitamin B um, gets uh, to your muscle structure quicker and, and causes rejuvenation in the muscles and tissue and, and, and so forth. So strongly recommend that. So humidifier will really help you know, with the um, with dryness and getting keeping the, the, moist, uh, the uh, moisture and the cords and folds nice and supple so that they're not all dried out. So not, uh, the, these diets by, or these um, supplements do not replace good diet. So don't think, well, you know, I ate at McDonald's today. Uh, I did have a, I did have a salad at, you know, where, whatever your restaurant is, loaded with salad dressing, which is probably a lot of hydrogenated oil. Look at the salad dressing. You're probably better off eating a hamburger at McDonald's than you are with some of the salad dressings that go on salads. So, um, but anyway, nothing replaces a good diet. These supplements are an augmentation or supplemental to a good diet. That's why they're called supplements, not your main staple. Oh, I just take my vitamins and I'm gonna be good to go. No, it doesn't work like that. So elixirs, let's talk about elixirs. It's okay to eat a cough drop or suck on a cough drop, a throat spray like throat coat or whatever. Um, but like I said, they can cause mucus, most, most times they do, and the constant clearing of the throat exacerbates the throat and the vocal folds and causes more inflammation. Um, this is an after band-aid to something else going on. So if you feel like you have to do the throat lozenge or the this or the that or whatever, chances are you missed the previous step of what I just said. Good diet, good exercise, a decent supplement, other things rather than, oh man, I'm screwed. I've, I've got myself to this point where I need a throat spray now or I, or I haven't exercised my throat properly or whatever um, to the point where you feel like you need something like that. I'm not saying don't do it or you have extreme weather conditions, lots of hot, going out of hot you know grocery stores or, or, or offices or schools and into extreme cold or vice versa, hot outside into extreme you know air conditioned situations. Avoid air conditioning too because the CO2 in it um, also uh, causes extreme dryness and uh, and can dry you out and cause dehydration. So, but anyway, uh, you know, but not, n this is all a band-aid to the deeper problems, which we talked about, poor diet, lack of exercise, sleep, you know, and so forth. So, speaking of exercise, so n next no-brainer tip. Guys, let's face it, singing is a sport. I'm gonna repeat what I said, and I've said it many times, it requires a lot of stamina, okay? It, it requires a lot of strength in your body to perform well. If you haven't conditioned your body with exercise, 
How can we expect our bodies to perform? How can we expect our voices to perform? Our body doesn't have the strength to deliver the stamina to require, that's required to sing well. So if you get your body in shape, the voice comes along for the ride. It's like, Yahoo, I've got strength in my body. It's particularly my abdominal cavity. But, but blood flow is going, good circulation is going. All these things are working in concert with each other to get good blood flow. Yes, it's a no-brainer tip. But guys, I mean, take some time out every day. Like put it on your calendar. Go for a walk, ride a bike. Swim, go to the gym, play frisbee or baseball or football or basketball. Do something and, and try to find something if you can that's not rigorous, that's not arduous. Oh, I gotta go to do this again. It's a lot better. You know, I, I used to live in Hawaii, as you guys know, no. And I'd go for my swims. I'd swim well, usually twice a day. And I'd walk and I'd ride my, I had a mountain bike and stuff too. And I'd do push ups because there's different parts of the body you want to keep strong. But, um, and I'd do my vocal warm ups too. That's another form of exercise. We'll get to that in a second. But I'd go for my swim and it was so glorious and beautiful. And the water was warm and I'd look into the sky, seeing fish and swimming with turtles and dolphin and all kinds of stuff. Um, you find yourself enjoying playing basketball or football or some, some, some sport. Yoga is great and it doesn't do much for cardio, but it's great. Um, but you're, you, you find an enjoyable event, you know, exercise event that you can do and then you, you're just in shape and you're happy and you've got all this great energy and all this stuff and you're losing weight and you've got, like I said, good bl blood flows going. So find things that get good blood circulation so that your body can get the oxygen to rejuvenate the cells and the muscles, make them stronger. So, and get, so find something that gets your heart rate up a little bit too. You know, even if you're walking, try not to walk just on flat surfaces. Find some hills here or there. Ride an exercise bike. You know, whatever you got to do. But you're going to be blown away at how much better you feel. And it will also help with sleep. It helps with the sleep process. So, um, of course, this is a no-brainer. Substance abuse. That can take a lot of forms, guys. Um, Drinking too much alcohol will absolutely completely dry you out and rob you of all kinds of nutrients, your pancreas, your kidney, your you know, bladder, you know, all kinds of things. Um, it's not good. And I know that from experience. I quit drinking a year ago and I, I feel so good for doing it. I used to drink to help me get to sleep, particularly through the night. And I was finally, after all these years, able to not do that. Um, I'm not saying don't have a glass of wine or a beer or whatever. I'm not, you know, if you're over 21 here in America. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, Try not to abuse it, right? Uh, it's okay to go out and enjoy and have a social drink and whatever, but don't abuse it. Anyway, uh, smoking turns your vocal folds to leather. We talked about that. Reliance on caffeine in the forms of coffee or Cokes, Coca-Cola, or you know regular Coke and drinks, uh, sodas, energy drinks we talked about, sugars we talked about. We all know what I mean by that too. It's a no-brainer, but are we willing to discipline ourselves to at least start minimizing? You know, the other thing too is if we can't come up with a diet and a plan that's doable, we're te we'll, we'll go off the wagon and we'll, we won't do it. We'll just say, it's just too hard, I can't do it. That sucks, I can't live up to that expectation. And I understand that. So, so don't just go cold turkey and all these things. Just try to like wean off the stuff a little bit and start to integrate some of these other things so you can make this shift. And it's, it's a percentage of how much you can do. It's not one or the other. It'd be great if you could do one or the other, but it's a percentage, guys. So, so be realistic and practical about your expectations, including how often you exercise your voice and stuff so that it's not arduous. It's not such a big chore or a big mountain to climb that you find yourselves not able to keep up with it, okay? So be realistic and practical about that and then you'll find that you can make these shifts and as you start to feel better, your body will want and crave this. You're gonna go, wow, this, this feels so good, you know? Um, so anyway, that's a no-brainer. Can we discipline ourselves to do this? Now, I can't live your guys' life, okay? And I can't babysit you guys. I can't babysit your habits. But what I can do is state the obvious, um, and give you the tools and the encouragement to know that every single thing I'm telling you works if you're willing to apply it. Now, um, I talked about caffeine being diuretic and uh, it shrinks into hydrates. Get in, start, start, start here, guys. Work in, in just trying a couple simple things. Start by doing a little less caffeine. And every time that you were gonna drink a cup of coffee, now you get your morning coffee, I can't live without my morning job, I get that. But just start with going, all right, I'm gonna drink a full eight ounce glass of water instead of my cup of coffee. And especially on an empty stomach. I want you to give yourself 30 minutes and revisit that. Now, you're, if you're really caffeinated, you're gonna go through withdrawals and it's a bummer and it's gonna be two or three days, you're gonna get headaches and stuff and it's a drag. I know that, I've done it a million times. 
Or you could drink green tea, which actually releases caffeine slower into the body. So you could start off by doing something that is half caffeinated like a green tea, but that still also is a diuretic and it will dry you out. But you can start to wean yourself and just try one thing. Don't try all these things. Just pick and choose one or, or exercise. Go, you know, can't do everything Ken said, but at 15 minutes a day, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna walk. 15 minutes, I'm just gonna start there. Choose off one of these things and and, and log it. You know, get a diary out and log it go, gosh, after like three or four or five days, I, I, I have more energy. Really, I, I have more energy. I feel better. I don't feel groggy during the day and, and sluggish and exhausted. And I'm sleeping a little better. That's kind of interesting, right? And less caffeine also helps me sleep even better, right? So you could go through these, you know, these uh, breaking these cycles and it's really, really, really cool. So. Um, I'm going to go now and talk about uh, a couple things here about the exercise part of this. When we're training our voices, like I said in a gym, we can't go straight to working out for an hour. And I have a singing course that's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can start there. You can go into my free singing forums. You will not believe how much amazing information is in there. Or you can go through the tutorials I'm going to put in the description here and you could just pick one of them, right? Kind of go through it. You guys are probably locked down somewhere and you're not out too much. You got time to do this. Now is the time to do this, guys. You probably have more time in your hands now than you ever have. So just start with a couple of these things and once you start to see the improvement of this, that will be the impetus and the excitement and you know the, the wow to get you to want to continue to delve into some of these other things that are, are really awesome. Use some common sense. You out there guys that want to sing with distortion, use some common sense. Don't jump straight off the cliff. You know, be, be, be a little smarter than that, right? Um, and don't buy some course that says, you know, boy, I'm gonna teach you how to sing with distortion you know, in a week or a month or whatever. Man, if you guys believe that, you'll believe just about anything just because it's on the internet. So um, I'm going to open this up to some questions. So before I move on though, I want to um, talk about overcoming some specific vocal issues. So we're not done yet guys. And I'm going to go a little over today because we got started late. Um, so proper vocal training. I'm going to give you some warm up tips for the morning so that you could just kind of lightly warm up your voices. Remember I talked about not shocking the voice, how important that is. The more we train properly, the stronger our voices become and the more agile they become, which is, you know, flexible and agile. Uh, and the more stamina that we could build for range and tone and power and pitch and control and all those things. So um, I want to talk about specific things, hoarseness, fatigue, loss of range, loss of power, mucus, we've talked about all these things already, acid reflux, leaky gut, nodes or polyps. I have a new course that's gonna be coming out and it's called Voice Repair. And I'm gonna show you guys how to heal from home, okay? How you can re rehabilitate your voice from home. That's coming very soon, the next two or three weeks. How not to strain, to overcome frogginess, how to stop cracking, People with breathy voices. I just have so much air. I use vocal fold paralysis. We're going to talk about that in a whole different subject that's different than these. But these can all be overcome with these things that I mentioned. Every last one of these things I just said on this list can be overcome with the things I just mentioned and a good vocal exercise program, right? Because the exercise program encompasses all of these things. And if you understand the mechanics of how the voice works, how to drop the larynx, how to have a neutral laryngeal position when you sing, how to get the bright ping that we've talked about, good vowels themselves, how to sing with good vowel placement with open throat technique, good diaphragmatic support, good relaxation response, visualizing the notes rather than straining to get to up to them, coming in from behind the notes and dropping down on them, understanding head voice. I'll put that in the description. I have a whole thing on building head voice. Mix voice, how to get in and out of mix voice. All of these things come so much easier if you've done the preliminary work of the things that I just mentioned to get us there. So get a good humidifier for your room if you can. I wanted to mention that too because that constant moisture, the greatest opera singers in the world, almost all of them sleep with a humidifier so that there's good moisture coming in the room at night to keep their vocal folds hydrated. Remember we talked about a lot about hydration. Avoid extreme, extreme temperature changes if you can. Hot and cold or cold to hot. Those that live in the Midwest in the summer, it's tough because it's blistering hot and very humid outside. Then boom, you're in a, a car that's got you know CO2 blasting with air conditioning or, or a grocery store, department store, office or school or something. 
Avoid it as much as you can. Avoid prolonged talking. Now, again, if you're going to talk a lot of, or that's your business, or whatever it is that you do, your teacher, or doctor, or you know, school teacher, or you know, whatever you sing for a living, whatever that is, avoid talking as much as you can. And if you do, please see my my course or see my my tutorials on diaphragmatic support. That's really really important. I have another new course that's coming out that that's going to be awesome. That's for that for speaking particularly, and you guys are going to really uh, benefit from that. You that um, have speaking for a living. Um, by the way, so before I forget, uh, I'm going to post all this stuff in the description. This coming Saturday is going to be guys versus girls. Uh, what's the difference? Okay, what's the difference between guys versus girls? We're gonna cover that. Um, and I wanna do some shout outs, um, I, but I promised that I'd answer some questions. So, uh, and before I do that, before I get to the question, guys, I wanna talk about some simple exercises that you can do in the morning to wake up your voice. These are gonna just be very simple. This isn't to help you be a great singer, it's to help the voice warm up really gently. The longer you can do this, before even going into your vocal exercises, or let's say you're not doing vocal exercises at all, you just wanna warm up your voice just to, to sing a little bit, is you can actually hum, straight up. You can just hum in octaves. Try to feel like there's a ball in the back of your throat. Try to hold the breath, like take a breath and I'll hold back the breath so you're not using too much air. Mm-hmm. Feel the buzz, feel that buzz in the throat or in the, in the folds, the cords themselves. Mm-hmm. Be real gentle, don't force it. Mm-hmm. Feel the buzz come into the, up into the, the, the nose, the nasal port. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Try to be seamless in the connection between chest and head voice. Mm-hmm. Try to remember the breath. Try to remember to get the stomach to do the work for you. Mm-hmm. You can walk around doing this. You could be in the car. It's okay. You're not singing. You're not overstressing the chords. You can do a simple scale. Mm-hmm. Don't have to get any vowels involved at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Try to get it nice and bright. Try not to let that air overtake the voice and overbloat the chords. Um, if you know how to do lip drills, this is one time where I'll say it's okay to do this if you need to get the lips to move for this expressed purpose. You want to be able to do that without this so that you understand the command of the breath and the relaxation response in the face. However, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll use too much air to get the lips to vibrate. And the old Bill Canto reason for our understanding of how to regulate this and mitigate this is by taking a candle and holding it up to the lips and not blowing out the candle to show that you're not using too much air in the breath. So, Go between chest and head. Try not to get that register break. You can do this for 20, 30, 40 minutes and you're gonna trip out. After doing this, when you start to do your vocal exercises in the morning, even if it's my free tutorials or if you have my course, whatever that is, if you've done this, especially first thing in the morning and especially after you've taken a nice long hot shower because you've got all of the, the, the steam and the fumes that have moisturized the cords, you're going to go, wow, I have so much freedom and so much flexibility and agility and resiliency in the cords themselves. You're going to go, wow, what a trip. So as gently as you do this, cutting back the air and using this, these are excellent, excellent vocal warm-ups. Another thing you can do is on your vowels on a single note. 
since you're going to start to work into your vowels themselves, you could start A E A O U. So A O real gentle. A O By the way, I waited until the end of this for all of you that were willing to go the distance with me on hearing my sermon on uh, the you know these no-brainer tips. Now you're getting the meat and potatoes of some things that will really help you. And for you though that stuck and went the distance with me, uh, I'm giving you some really cool stuff. So again, hey Now these aren't correct vowels. I want you to get a big open throat vowel when you do the course. That's different. This is just to wake up the voice. Remember your breath. Hey Keep it nice and bright. And easy. Cut back the breath. Remember, hold the breath. Don't stress and go too high beyond your reach or where you feel like you're going to start to strain. It's okay. We're just totally doing like a pre warm up. Ladies, you can do this in your registration. It doesn't have to be the notes that I'm doing. So we did A E A O U. Then we go um, O U A A E. So A O U. So I'm going to go O A E. It's safer to start on the U vowel itself, but I actually start from the position of O so we don't get caught in the throat. So it's really U O A A, right? E U O A A E. But I start with O on this one because you want O A E. back down the scale. This gently warms up the voice again. It just wakes it up. It's kind of like getting up. It's having your, your vocal morning cup of coffee for your vocal folds before you start your vocal regimen or you move on into singing. Now, a couple things too. Um, as you're doing this, uh, you can actually little by little lean into the sound a little bit to wake the chords up more and more and more. Don't over sing. Don't sing too loud. Allow the resonance of what's going on, that nice bright tone, that ping, allow that to come in and take over the sound on its own by itself from working out all these mechanisms that help with that. So anyway, guys, hopefully this was helpful. Um, again, I am going over because um, we did uh, have a late start and I want to answer a few questions and let's see. Uh, I was just wondering a few streams ago, you mentioned uh, that caffeine coffee is bad for the voice. Would you see that giving up coffee is worth it? Because I love my coffee. You know, you don't have to give it up. I mean, I still drink green tea. I, I, I did stop caffeine for a really long time because it actually physically bothered me and made me feel sick. Just be, use some common sense. Drink your coffee in the morning. Try not to do it. Now, in fairness, guys, let's, let's, let's wear our heart on our sleeve and let's be vulnerable for a minute. When I was practicing guitar when I was growing up, I think I mentioned this already in a stream and I'll just make this quick. I used to drink the strongest cup of coffee in the morning on an empty stomach, which was horrible on your central nervous system. It's horrible on your stomach. It's horrible all on your adrenal glands, all the way around. But I would do that every day so I could practice four, five, six hours a day on guitar. I did that five, six days a week and I did it for years. And it eventually really cost me because it cost me uh, some adrenal function that I had. I had some uh, nasty adrenal fatigue. I still go through it sometimes. So I have to be really careful because sugars do that also. That'll um, be uh, trigger uh, that response. So just be just be careful, guys. Use some common sense. And and uh, you know there, there's a funny thing. Uh, do everything in moderation. 
uh, which was an old Hindu quote, I believe. And then someone came, came along and said, do everything in moderation, uh, even moderation. <laughs> even do moderation to moderation. I don't know about that. I'm kidding. Funny joke though. Um, anyway, Daniel, PI, uh, bought the course about a month ago. I'm practicing five to six days a week. How do you know the difference between healthy soreness and hoarseness resulting from poor technique? You all know because a little bit sore just feels kind of like a worked muscle. It'll feel like a worked muscle. It won't sound hoarse. That's how you'll know. Now that doesn't mean we don't wake up with what I call morning voice, where you worked out the day before and you wake up the next morning, <sighs> kind of feel dry. You'll know because when you start your workout the next morning, you'll get up and you'll be right back in the saddle and that break ping will come back and the freedom will come back and all your, your things you've been working on. And again, just like exercising in the gym, we are breaking down muscle structure, folks. I don't care what anybody tells you. You know, you should never stress when seeing, gosh, those guys, just go away. Prove it with your voice, sing to me. Show me how awesome you are to prove what you're saying. We're breaking down muscle structure just like we would in a gym, okay? So we wanna be careful. Most people say, well, Ken, wait a minute, does that mean if you're doing it like a gym, you're supposed to give yourself a day rest in between? That's true, but a lot of people that are like in the sporting world, that's not true because they work out, they, you know, they, they go and, and they practice or they warm up five, six days a week and they, sure, they'll train different areas of their voice. Like you might train your chest voice and then your head voice and your mixed voice. There might be different things that you do differently. We change it up. I cover all that in my singing course and you want to get the course for those kinds of nuances because you're not going to get that off a tip here, a quick little tutorial on YouTube. So hopefully that answered your question, Daniel. Uh, Static Yonder, what is your, let's see here. What is your opinion on drinking tea for the voice? I just said it a little while ago. Um, you know, drink non-caffeinated things. Good, healthy, warm things on the course that don't uh, on the cords that don't dry you out are great. You know, chamomile is great. There, there's uh, something called red zinger. I see that going around. A lot of people like that. It's 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 good stuff. Uh, my wife loves that, and I've seen other people drink it too. Um, but things that actually coat the throat, I'm not such a big fan of. Uh, what, what about ginger tea? Awesome, ginger tea is great, man. I couldn't recommend it more highly. And if you're getting a cold or flu, <laughs> probably because you're staving and warding off evil spirits, but chop up some garlic, throw that in there too, and some green tea, some green tea with some ginger, some jasmine tea, and drink some ginger with garlic in it. It's probably keeping all your friends and family away from you to keep you from getting sick. No, I'm kidding. It really does help. Uh, it's nature's antibiotic, both of those, and they're excellent. Philippe, regarding exercise, would you recommend complementing running with a plank, deadlifts, um, a good morning? You know, okay, so we've talked about this and I've covered this before and I wanna say this again. You don't wanna do things that cause muscles to spasm and to lock up, okay? I'm not saying doing crunches or sit-ups are bad. Running is great. I used to run in place or do jumping jacks or ride a bike or I had a Nordic track, one of those things is like cross-country skiing and I used to do that and sing because it helps you become anaerobic, which means to be able to sing in the absence of oxygen because you find that when, you, you know, when the adrenaline kicks in and you're all excited and your heart is pounding, you lose a lot of your oxygen because of your adrenaline. So you need to learn to sing with uh, it being in good shape and your body be accustomed to doing that so that you can do that. So be careful on what that does. So deadlift, and planks, you know, stuff like that. Those are good for bodybuilding. All that's great. Don't want to change your bodybuilding stuff. But remember, I told you guys this before, I've, I've worked with triathletes that have a tough time with their abdominal cavity because they're so used to doing crunches and things like that that lock up the, the abdominal muscles where they can't release and relax to get good ebb and flow for the di uh, diaphragmatic support mechanism. So refer specifically in my course on this subject on how to get that ebb and flow for the diaphragm because that is, and, and then also bodybuilding, you know, you're, you're, got this, you're getting all tense up, right? Your muscle structure is all tense. You know, you're doing your curl like this, right? Well, ideally, when we sing, one curl would be a diaphragmatic breath, like this, and then a complete relaxation response. And then one more curl, and then a relaxation response. When we go like this with, you know, with our, our dumbbells, you know, we're doing all this stuff, we're creating the whole muscle structure to get locked down and bound up, and that's the whole point of it, is to get pumped up with your muscles. We don't wanna do that when we sing. We want to completely relax like a marionette that's been dropped, a puppet, you know, where the strings have been dropped. And we want to pick it back up when we're ready to sing. And then we want to completely relax when we're not, you know, in singing mode or in the process of singing a phrase. Okay. Um, 
and you talked about posture in the pelvic floor and all that stuff. So you got to refer to my video on that. Uh, Wojciech, I don't know how you say your name. Kentia Fofolke, how does dieting, cu cutting to a low body fat impact vocal cords of singing? Okay, good question on that. Um, that's great to do, really great to do. Supplement that with a good collagen, okay? Because if you're if you're looking to cut your body fat, that's great. You're getting healthy. That's awesome. Just get a good collagen, a really good collagen. Try to get a one types one, two, three, four, five, and five and twelve or ten. I forget what it is. But uh, Docs or Axe has a good one out. That's really good. You get collagen types two and three. Uh, that's only good for like nails and skin and stuff. And you really want one uh, a collagen that's going to support muscle health and growth. So I recommend Doctor Axe's, even though I know he's really sensational and how he presents his stuff. He does have a really good collagen product. It's called Ancient Nutrition, and it's a really good product, and I recommend it highly. When I sing high, JDE Crazy, uh, it always gets itchy, and I, I get coughs after that. It was a problem for that. Yes, we talked about that. That's esophageal uh, irritation. So um, we're going to cover that, but what it is is it's spasming, and it's tickling. It's getting an irritation, and it has to do with the way the oxygen that's passing um, across the, uh, the trachea, and, and then it affects the esophagus. Now, that could could be caused by leaky or by um, by acid reflux. It could be caused by post nasal post nasal drip or a combination of both. So I'll try to cover that in another um, thing. But it's fixable. I fix it all the time. I have a lot of people that suffer with that. A lot of times it's actually just post nasal drip or even silent reflux. People don't know they have it. They regurgitate through the night and it eats away at the vocal folds. Or they have sinus infections that they don't know that are dripping on the cords and they don't even know it during the day. They have it um, don't have it during the day and it drips on the cords at night. But then you go to uh, to go to sing a note and it feels like it's pinching, squeezing, or like a feather is tickling you down there and you have to cough. We'll cover that. Um, CSI, I boil a piece of turmeric with ginger and drink it as tea. That is awesome. Look at this. Read this, guys. CSI, I boil a piece of turmeric with ginger and drink it as tea. It removes the inflammation in my throat almost immediately. The proof is in the turmeric and ginger at this point. Isn't that cool? So this isn't just Ken Tamplin saying this stuff, this is people trying this stuff and it works. Uh, I'm gonna do one more uh, thing. Jack Russell, uh, what do you think of Jack Russell's voice, the former singer of Great White? Okay, so a lot of people talk about Adele and Jack, Ry of, of Jack Russell and other people that smoke cigarettes a lot. It's gonna cost them over time they're gonna lose their voice. Look how many times Adele has lost her voice. Look at how many times she's had surgery, guys. Come on, look how many times these guys have had surgery over stuff like this. You know, you can't play with fire and expect not to get burned. So that's what I'm going to say about that. So don't forget to ring that bell, gang. We're way over time here, but I, I made it up for my uh, uh, my uh, delinquency on being um, 10, 10 minutes late. I think we're six, seven minutes. But don't forget, guys versus girls voices. You guys are going to want to stick around for this because it's going to be really cool interesting information on not relegating yourself to a guy's voice or a girl's voice, what makes them different, how you can sing in different registrations. It's going to be awesome. So don't forget to ring that bell. Join my notification squad. Thank you to my notification squad out there. You guys rock. I will see you guys again on Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, which is Los Angeles time. And until then, gang, God bless you. Peace out.